Hi guys, Podmaster here. I hope you're having a wonderful day as always. If you're new here, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And if you're a recurring viewer, thank you, thank you so much for watching. So today I want to do a bit of a follow-up video to a video I made a few months ago called Is Funko in Trouble? And in that video, if you haven't watched it, I'll link it up here so you can go do that. I essentially articulated some points as to why I thought Funko was going to be in trouble because they were losing money and a lot of their top sort of almost like celebrity employees from the marketing team, if you will, like Sully and Cameron and Ashley were unfortunately let off because the company was losing money. And I also argued some reasons against that point as well. But yeah, overall I kind of came to the conclusion that Funko was going to do okay because I thought that their stores were reopening and one of the initial reasons I thought they weren't doing well was because the brick and mortar retail stores that Funko puts their products in, like Hot Topic and GameStop were closed due to the pandemic and they wasn't really sure where they when they were going to be reopened in most states. But I saw an article that uh, that was posted on Instagram by an account named Big Papa Pop. So big shout out to him. I'll link the article down in the description. Just to be clear, he didn't actually write it, but he did post about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have seen it. It's from Yahoo Finance, and that's what inspired me to actually make this video. And it is called, Consumers Indulged in Funko Pop Figurines During the Coronavirus Pandemic. Not even a global pandemic can, pe can keep people from collecting their Funko Pops, which is certainly true. So we're just gonna go over it here and just talk about what this article mentions, because it talks about some of the points I just articulated and also revealing some news as well. So here we go. And according to this article, Funko's Q3 earnings showed that although their stock is down nearly 40% year to date, as in from January until right now, it's up 64% in the past few months. And they accredit this shift for a couple of reasons. One, which the article doesn't specifically say, but I'm assuming because a lot of their brick and mortar retailers like, like Hot Topic and GameStop are actually open for in-person shopping. So if you want to go buy a pop, you can go there versus just getting it second market or something or second hand. But uh, according to Brian Mariotti, we were very fluid with our ability to move products from specialty where there was no mall traffic to our direct consumer. We went from only 200 of our own products on the, our website as late as June of this year to now well over 2,000 products available on our website. And that's another thing I've noticed is that during the pandemic, a lot of the brand new Funko Shop releases have been releasing on the Funko Shop. And of course the in-person stores are still getting them, but now you have the extra option of going to the Funko Shop instead of an in-person store, which A is safer and B a lot more convenient for consumers, which is sort of driving that stock increase, but there's simply more places to buy the product. And another thing I've noticed is that a lot of the Funko Pops that are on go on the Funko Shop as in the new products, they actually release there before the brick and mortar stores and especially the smaller stores get them. So that's an added perk. So Funko's getting more of their sales directly to the website. And as a result, they're actually making more money per sale because the whole thing with the retailers is that like the Funko kind of needs the retailer to be the middleman between themselves and the consumer. So they give the product to the retailer who gives it to the consumers. So obviously when you cut out the middleman, you don't have to give them any sort of commission of the sales. So they make a lot more money that way. And I think that's been really a driving reason why the fun the company has been doing a lot better recently is because they're keeping a larger percentage of each Funko Pop sale than they would have otherwise. And I think that's a huge move that will definitely continue in the in this sort of post COVID world once the vaccine is widely distributed, which I think is really interesting. And also I was really surprised because I knew that the Funko shop before the pandemic didn't have a whole lot of products, but only 200, I mean, wow. That is a shockingly low amount and I can't believe they already have 2000 products. That's an increase of over 1800 products in just a few months, which is absolutely crazy if you really sit down and think about it. But moving on, they just talk about the Selena Funko Pop, which just came out. It says that it's sold out in just under 40 minutes. I'm assuming that just refers to the Funko Shop website itself because I'm assuming since that pops a common release, it'll be available at other retailers. So that's a slightly misleading statement there. And then they mentioned obviously some other musicians that have gone the Funko Pop treatment like Billy Idol, Ed Sheeran, that kind of thing. And then they also go into a bit of news here saying, new content for 2021 includes pop figurines based on Disney's WandaVision, which is a Marvel TV series, and the Netflix hit Queen's Gambit which I'm not sure if it's a movie or a show, but 
yeah, that, I know it's been super popular with a lot of people and it's been getting great reviews. I just haven't seen it myself personally. But in terms of the WandaVision pops, I'm not sure if that's actually going to be a new release because they announced a wave of WandaVision pops a few months ago or yeah, a few months ago, whereas, you know, like the Vision, I think 50s Vision, 50s Wanda, Halloween Wanda, stuff like that. So I'm not sure if the, what the article is referring to is that that line is going to get a wider release in 2021, where it's not just the Funko HQ or the Funko Shop getting them because they get them a bit earlier, or if it's actually a, a second wave of figures. So we'll have to kind of stay tuned on that. But with the Queen's Gambit Funko Pops, they have not actually announced those officially. I mean, I would assume they make them since the, the show is so popular and I'm assuming a lot of people would buy them, but there's been no official leaks or leaked images that I've seen. And they kind of go in here to some details about what the Funko Pops could be, saying that the they're gonna make three outfits. Like they said, um, we've they've had a wonderfully humorous dialogue on what the three outfits are going to be. So. I'm assuming the three outfits are going to be for the main character, whatever her name is. So maybe they'll have like a chase or exclusive in there as well. The fashions are amazing in that show, says Brian. And lastly, this is another thing that kind of proves the point that Funko is going to have some long-term success is the Pop Yourself program, which just began in Funko Hollywood and Funko HQ. And that's an experience that fans have been asking for for an extremely long time. And according to this article, the Pop Yourself will be moving online late next year. Unfortunately, I'm a little disappointed with that time frame because if they're rolling it out now in December, I don't see why they can't just, I don't know, maybe move it to say June or July or something, maybe earlier. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just really disappointed in that. And I hope that maybe the lo in the long term that will be very profitable for Funko. But yeah, anyways, guys, this has been an episode of Popmaster, me doing a bit of a follow-up video to one I made a few weeks ago. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye.